Just be the famous ones. All right. Yeah, no cousin. Um, so this is something that I kind of sort of always talk about on page 119. A Las Vegas casino. We're there. Okay. Sterps only talked about casinos so many times. Las Vegas Casino wonders if the dice they are using for a gambling game is really producing a six on a one on six roll of dice. A one in six chance means it's a 16.67% chance that you roll a six on an individual die. Okay? So, so when you roll dice, when you roll a single die, on a single die, these are any of the outcomes. Each one of those outcomes needs to be... Whoa, what's going on? That board is... That board's lagging for some reason. Don't know why. I, I don't know what's going on there. Whoa. All right. Um, let's... let's Let's see what happened here. And disconnect. Let's reset this. All right, so I'll be on this board for a moment. All right, so any one of these numbers showing up on a die should be the a 1 in 6 chance, which is a 16.67% chance of this taking place. So in this case, they want to know, hey, is a six more likely to show up than not? So in the world of casinos, people will always try and break the system and they will always cheat. People often will try and... Uh, sorry, it's racing for a minute. People will often... If it falls, it's just going to hit Brian, don't worry. <laughs> All right. It should calm down a sec. So basically, I've been at the craps table enough times in my life, either just monitoring or even playing, where I will watch one of the floor managers come over and they have this little device that they put a die in and it spins the die. And by them spinning the die, it ensures them that it is an, a fair way to die. A lot of times people a lot of times people will try and uh, cheat the system. They will try and swap out the die that's being used on the table to an identical looking one that has a weighted side, meaning the side that's weighted will be on the bottom more often than any other side. And so they want this casino wants to know, hey, did is this taking place with an individual die? The casino has reason to believe that the die is producing sixes at a higher rate. They roll the dice a thousand times, which results in 174 sixes. Okay? Use an alpha value of 0 0.10. So we want this to take place in order to see if they have evidence that the die is producing more sixes than 16.67% of the time. All right, so now, please know this. So they want to know, is this happening? Is this happening or not? Now, the thing is, they're going to do an outcome of 1,000 rolls of the dice, okay? Yeah, this, that's still going slow. Who knows what's going on? All right, so they want to know if this is truly an event that's taking place or is this not. Now, please know this. As I roll dice a thousand times, I should be approaching 16.67. If I roll the dice 10,000 times, it's going to get closer to 16.67. If I roll it 100,000 times, it's going to get even closer to 16.67. But we are not quite sure if it will or will not get, you know, be that. Now, if we roll it a thousand times and we find that, you know, 35% of the time, you know, a six is showing up, that means you probably have a weighted dice, okay? It means that somebody is a cheat in the casino, and they're going to, what they're going to do, and I kid you not, the casinos will do this, 
if they if they grab a die and they spin it and they realize that it's a way to die every person who is at that table including the workers face goes on to the facial recognition program so that anytime those people go into another casino it'll pop up saying this person was at a table that somebody dropped a loaded die at and they will literally follow that person from casino to casino through their cameras and using their artificial intelligence to recognize people facial recognition is a spot on thing you can't change it yeah worldwide yeah yeah they are all networked okay so if you get labeled as a cheat but they haven't proved it they're gonna watch you okay yeah if if they sit there and start watching and let's say you go up to another craps table and all of a sudden it becomes a much more hot table they're gonna test those dice and they're like uh oh we found a loaded die hey look at this Bri Rudd we had him at the table over at Caesars now it's a month and a half later and now he's over here at Bally's you, you, you're gonna have a conversation in the back room where there's no cameras <laughs> and you come across dudes like easy that are just they're gonna break every bone in your body and say hey, I don't know how he jumped I, I, I don't know how he fell out of the 15th floor window <laughs> all right so all right so so shh, they rolled a thousand times and 174 times a six came up because they rolled a thousand times that means 17.4 percent of the time a six showed up on this dice so is it is this good enough evidence to say that this die is a loaded die or is 17.4 approaching 16.67 I'd say statistics will tell us okay so we're gonna call mu we're gonna call probability rolling a six okay so our alternative our, our null hypothesis will actually be mu is equal to one out of six and then our alternative in this case mu is going to be greater than one out of six okay because it's greater than this because the one tail situation you still with me on this so now we have to find our standard error because we don't have a standard deviation we have a standard error okay so what we're going to do is we're going to do the probability of a six rolling one minus the probability of rolling a six over the number of outcomes so I'm going to go 0.1667, and then 1 minus 0.1667 is 0.8883333. And we're going to divide that by the 1,000 rolls. And so we're going to get a standard error here of 0.012. Okay? Hey, what's up? We're talking, we're talking gambling cheats and statistics. Nice. We're taking the over on. <laughs> All right, so normal distribution curve looks like this. They want to say that this is 0.1667, and then we're going to add and subtract the standard error from that. So I get to uh, 0.179. Oops, 0.179. I get to 0.191. I get to 0.203. Each of these could be turned into a, a percent pretty easily just by moving the decimal two places right. 0.143 and then 0.131. All right. So they're saying, hey, this 17.4% chance happened. So we're talking about this is the area we're going to look at okay Ooh, that died what happened there connect
I don't know why that one died. It's going back to it, hopefully. There it goes. All right. So now we have to find the p value. What is our favorite thing to use to find the p value? Who do we use? Desmos. Desmos, here we come. We're going to see what's going to happen here. All right. So it's a normal distribution. And we said, I forgot what my values were. 0 0.1667. 0 0.1667. We have a standard error that we found is 0 0.012. 0 0.012. And this is going to be our normal distribution. Let's ignore this for now. All right. So we want greater. We want greater than. So we're going to say this 0.174 to infinity. So this gives us a p value of roughly 0.27. Okay. So we have a p value of 0.217. All right, there's my p-value. All right, so they wanted us to do an alpha of this. I know that 0.27 is greater than 0.10. Okay, so this means that we are going to fail to reject. We're going to fail to reject our null. Friends, we did not find strong evidence that the, 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 the individual dye produces more than 16.67% of the heads. So, Bry, you're safe now because the dye that you were using, they tested. So, I get my teacher so I do that. Nope. So, so, you're safe from easy for today. <laughs> but, but easy's going to be keeping his eye on you. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. All right. Hey, so a few things just to know, my friends. This math problem here is done daily in a casino. So, like, you literally have the information right now to go and work at a casino and be the statistician to test the dice. I will tell you the casino throughout the day are testing their dice regularly. How do you make a wave die? Huh? How do you make a wave die? Okay, so you make it look like a regular die. And what they usually do is, you know, like, usually it's like in the casino, it's going to be a red colored clear die. They want it clear so you can see through it. And so you have, you have white dots, you know, have a one is a white dot, two white dots, three white dots, so on and so forth. So what they would do is one of the dots, they would make heavier where the heavier side means the ops side will show up more often when you roll it. Uh, like, <laughs> huh? How do you make that? So what they would do is like literally somebody would steal one of the die or buy one of the die from the casinos. They would hollow out what it probably the one they would hollow out because they want the six. So they'd hollow out the one, and they're still going to use as clear as they possibly can resin. But they're going to have it weighted so that one will be on the bottom side of the die because the opposite of the one is the six every time. Still roll every time. Not every time, but it has a higher probability of the six showing up um, than not. And that's what the weighted die would do. So a die right now, even though you have different dots on each side, its weight is perfect, meaning it will roll perfect. But how do you get it on the table? Mm -hmm. job so perfect. literally what you do... It's like, let's say I have a, a long coat on, yeah. okay? And up my sleeve, up my sleeve, I have a single die that's weighted. So I'm gonna pick up my die, I'm gonna take it in my hand, 
and I'm going to, you know, somehow flip one of the die up into my jacket, which will fall into the crease slug pocket, and then I do something like this, and I'll drop my other die in my hand. You have to create a cheat system in your jacket to change it. Like you can't reach your pocket. And go, I got, I got a die here over in this. No, you're going to use a casino die, so you somehow have to change the die on the table. And there's actually been times where you have a person opposite side of the craps table from you. So you go to roll the dice, so you shuffle the dice around. Well, then you have these two fingers holding one of the die. And you throw the die, and your friend at the opposite side of the table has it, the weighted die in their hand and drops it. So it appears you rolled the dice, but you actually kept one, the one of the die in your hand. So your friend opposite, your partner is in on um, the scheme with you. Has now got it. No way they don't see that. There's no way they don't see that. Oh, it's amazing though. It's it's truly amazing that it they people try to cheat. I mean, all the time. They want to cheat. They want to advantage it. They want to make money. Hey, casinos got a lot of money. They're not going to miss cheating in that phone. They're not. They're not going to miss the extra twenty-five thousand that they skimmed off the the pocket and cheating. Okay. So that's really how it goes. I mean, so you create, you, you again, you, you, uh, you go in there and you make something good. Like your friend could have his hand, and your friend could, you know, be leaning on the rail on the table like this, okay, and you're drawing. And you're gonna throw your single die because you're holding the one. You're throwing it opposite to him. And as soon as you throw that die, you can throw two die. Yeah, because you normally throw two, but you're hold you're gonna hold on to one of them. So when you roll the die, and you figure that die is not on the table, and then the other person drops the die. It's really hard for the human eye to catch it, especially if you are at a really, really busy table. Why don't they just wave the die? <laughs> they could. So what they're gonna do is they're watching the die. And if you create a hot table, this the manager, the floor manager, will walk over. And he has his little device, and he'll pick up the die, put it in there, and it's on the corners, and they'll spin it in this little thing, and it'll tell you, it, it'll tell him right away with his little. Page. I not so much about this casino. Oh, because I lived in you Vegas. Did you? I've lived in forever. Still. Did you gamble every day? Oh no, but every weekend I would go to the casinos and I would just watch. Like I, honestly, a lot of times I'd be watching craps, and I'd be sitting there going in my head. Watching the numbers, watching the numbers, watching the numbers, watching the dice, going, I'm going to find a pattern. And I would sit and try and look for the pattern. I used to go to the roulette wheel and always try and look for a pattern on the roulette wheel. So are you good at gambling? No. <laughs> no, I've, lo I've left more in Vegas than I than I came with. So, But it, do it doesn't stop me from watching how people gamble, how people throw. And I've seen the guy come over to the table, pick up the die, pick, picks up a few sets of dice, puts one in the thing, spins it. Okay, that one's good. Pick the other one. Spins it. That's good. And watch away from the table. Uh, They're just checking to see if that thing spins and it's like boom, it's a way to die. Then you lose all the money that you made. No, no, no. What they're gonna do is everyone who's on that table because they don't know who the cheat is yet. Everyone's picture, their face. Boom. It's now. Say like I already made fifty. Yeah, like, care. Now they're gonna watch you. Who cares if I've already made fifty? Well, the casino doesn't care right now. They're just want to catch you on the next time. And they're gonna break every hand, and every bone in your body. They actually like yeah. when the mafia used to when the mafia used to run the casinos, it would was very convenient to say, "Oh, the cameras weren't working in that hallway. I don't know what happened. This guy went crazy and started smashing his face against the wall." I, I kid you not. It, they don't do that anymore. They, well, now, so what? What they have done in Nevada now that corporations own the casinos. They have made trespassing, the crime of trespassing, it's a misdemeanor in 49 states, except for the state of Nevada. It's a felony. Oh, so they didn't look you as a trespasser. And now you have a felony charge on you. Now you're looking at jail time. So it's just kind of kind of interesting how they, how, I mean, they make money. They make a lot of money. Friends, do you know that? Can you just throw a stash them that they couldn't? No, because the, the facial recognition right now, the most accurate one they have is they measure by the light in the room, the diameter of your pupil and how far your pupils are apart from each other. Doesn't matter. It's still going to see your pupils. So.
Think about this. Your guys' phones are recognized in your faces. That's the same software. Basically, what your thing is doing is doing the geometry of your face. It really just looks like the eyes. It's really the eyes right now. It used to be the eyes, nose, mouth ratio because everyone's different. But, but now they now they looking at the eyes. Now, a guy could go and gouge his one eye out and say they're never going to catch me. But it's interesting. All right. So let's get away from Vegas. This next one on the next page talks about an online retailer. Boy, what are these online retailers? We just don't know what they are. Okay, Amazon. All right, an online retailer. An online retailer says uh, they, they know that 8% of things that are ordered online are returned. Okay? The company changes several policies and wonders if the percentage of returned items will change as a result. A random sample, oh, it's important. They just said random sample. We like this. Random sample of 200 people. That's a nice amount of number. Random sample. Random sample of 200 people. Yeah, backside. So they realized that they did. 200 people, and that only 10 out of 200 were returned, which means that is 0.05. Okay. Um, we don't have an alpha or a p value, so we want to do the test that is p less than 0.05. When we do our test, we have to find the p value. Okay, so let's create our normal distribution, or let's create our null. We're going to say that mu equals returned clothing okay so mu in this case is equal to eight percent and our alternative is that mu is less than eight percent oops eight percent so it's directional it's one tail so it's one tail all right create a normal distribution all right so we have eight percent or 0.08. I have to find my standard error. Okay. Being I know that, being I know that they did this, that's great. They're claiming eight percent, so we're going to create our standard error. So we're going to go 0.08 and one minus 0.08 divided by our 200 outcomes. And I have to do the math on this. So let's see. We're going to go square root. 0.08 times 0.92 divided by 200. So it looks like we have a p-score of 0.02. Okay, our standard error, our standard error, excuse me, is 0.02. Okay, which is 2%. All right, so 10%. 12%, 14%, 6%, 4%, 4%, and 2%. All right. So they found they found this here when they ran the routine. So they want to see is this tail big enough to say yay or nay? Fail to reject or reject the null. Okay? All right, so I'm going that way. Oops, go here. Ah, come on, go here. So I'm going to go make this negative infinity. <coughs> Oops, infinity. And we're testing what? I forget. We're testing 0.05. Oh, I got to change this normal distribution. Uh, uh, 8%, 2%. So I'm going to keep these as percent. So 8%, 2%. Here's my normal distribution. We want to see if less than 5%. So 
This tells me that my p-value is 0 0.07. So my p-value is 0 0.07. And I can tell you that 0 0.07 is greater than 0 0.05. So what do we do? Fail to reject or reject. Well, let's, let's look back at this one. What do we do? We had 0.27 was greater than 10. This one is greater than, so fail to reject. Good. Fail to reject the null. Okay, meaning we did not find strong evidence against the null hypothesis. So this company changed all these things, and we don't have enough evidence to say, hey, it changed our return rate policy. Cool? If if it came out to like 0.03, so 0.03 would be less than 0.05, then we would reject the null, meaning we found evidence, strong evidence that went that way. So my friends, that's what I got for you for this.